Hugo and the Man Who Stole Colours. Hugo was bored. He'd just finished the painting he'd been doing all morning. It's a lovely day, said Mother. Why don't you go fishing? So Hugo took his fishing rod and set off for the river. An old trout swam by as Hugo sat gazing into the water. Then he heard a faint sound. He thought it sounded like someone crying. Hugo gently parted the rushes behind him. Anything wrong? He asked the dark shape which sat huddled by the water. Yeech! screeched Hugo. <gasps> a witch! But I'm not a witch! wailed the creature. I'm a good fairy. My name is Belinda. <clears throat> Yesterday I changed myself into a witch for a fancy dress party. I used a spell from my beautifully coloured book of magic. But when I wanted to change back, every single spell had vanished. Nothing was left. Nothing but empty white pages. Whatever shall I do? Hugo was stunned. Well, first of all, you better show me where you left your book of magic. Belinda pulled out an ancient book bound in dragon skin. Look! She cried, flicking the bare white pages under Hugo's nose. But something caught Hugo's eye. One ghostly white toadstool stood out among a cluster of coloured ones. More white toadstools led into the trees. Someone's stealing colours, cried Hugo. We must follow this trail of white toadstools. The two friends followed the tell-tale toadstools all that afternoon and evening. Finally, exhausted, they sank down on a grassy bank to sleep. But in the morning, they were in for a surprise. Thump, thump, bang, bang. Hugo pulled Belinda clear as a little door in the bank opened to reveal a white rabbit wearing crumpled pyjamas. You may as well come in for breakfast, he grumbled. The two friends followed him into his cosy burrow and told the white rabbit about their search for the lost colours. Funny, frowned the rabbit. Yesterday afternoon, I went to sleep in the sun, brown as usual. But when I woke up, I was white. So, we're on the right track, cried Hugo. After breakfast, Hugo and Belinda set off again on their search. Suddenly, a large white animal jumped out at Hugo. A brown weasel turned white, gasped Hugo. The newcomer scowled. I am an ermine, he snapped. And ermines are always white. Hugo blushed and rushed away. Hugo, come quickly, cried Belinda. A trail of white bluebells led to an extraordinary sight. The colourful countryside stopped, giving way to a cold, white landscape. The colour thief must live here, said Belinda. They came to a long white tower. That must be the thief's house, whispered Hugo. They climbed a dark staircase. At the very top of the stairs sat a little man made of colours. I watch you through my telescope, he boomed. What do you want? Sir, squeaked Hugo bravely. We are searching for the coloured words from Belinda's book, the red and white spots from the toadstools, the, the blue from the bluebells in the forest, and the brown from our friend here, the rabbit. Have you seen them by any chance? The little man leapt from his chair, screeching with laughter. <laughs> I've got them all here, he cackled. I'm the man who steals colours. We'll have our colours back, please, said Hugo. Oh, no, you won't, said the colour man, mumbling magic words that made him grow until he reached the sea. You can't frighten us, cried Hugo. I bet you can't shrink, though, said Belinda. Easy, said the colour man, and he mumbled the magic words backwards. He grew smaller and smaller until he was small enough to ride a snail. Hugo sprang forward, tied his handkerchief around the man's mouth and bound his arms with a piece of string he had in his pocket. Meanwhile, Belinda searched the room. 
she found a jar full of coloured letters. These must be mine, said Belinda. Hugo grabbed the book of magic and dipped it into the jar. An angry gurgle sounded from the colour man as the pretty letters slipped back between the pages of the book. Belinda chanted a spell from her book of magic and, in a flash, the colour man was his old size again. Only your power to make mischief has gone, Belinda said as she freed him. I want you to take each box and jar of colours to the window and tip them out into the countryside where they belong. As the colours spilled out over the ground, they all seemed to remember where they belonged. Their work done, Hugo and Belinda set off for home. Belinda murmured the spell to change her back into her old self. Ziggity, zaggity, zippity, zap. <laughs> In the woods, they met their old friend, the rabbit. He was very happy to be brown again. But he could not quite believe that the funny little witch he'd invited to breakfast that morning had turned into such a beautiful creature in such a pretty dress. It's time I was going, said Hugo and he set off across the stream. While the rabbit sat puzzling over the change in Belinda, Hugo skipped home, trying to think up a tale his mother would believe. And what do you think he told her? <laughs>